I just want to do a video on fog, driving in fog. See that person in front there, he's got his fog light on, rear fog light. <clears throat> that, they're the brake lights for that person. He hasn't got a, a rear fog light on. The fog lights are brighter, basically. Um, when do we put fog lights on? The highway code says when our vision, when, when our visibility in front of us is less than 100 metres. That's when we put our fog lights on. Which, looking up, I don't know whether this will come out on the camera, but I can actually see more than 100 metres. So it's not, not required in this case. What is fog? Fog is, in effect, low-lying cloud, isn't it? So it's water droplets. So not only does it affect our vision, um, the, the, the density of the cloud makes some fog thicker than other fog. And um, not only that, it's wet. So all the road surface, as you can see this morning, all the road surface is all wet. If you're driving, your overall stopping distances are all doubled. I just want to do a brief video here talking about fog and how it affects your driving because it is perfectly possible for you to go through your driving lessons, all of your driving lessons in fact, and pass your test and have not had any um, experience of driving in fog, which in our country is, is quite a big deal actually because we do get fog fairly often, don't we? Crops up quite a bit. The severity of the fog is the key thing and have a little look and, and consider to yourself whether it is actually necessary for you to be driving because if it's not necessary for you to drive it's a bit like driving in the snow if you don't need to make that journey then by far the, the best option is to delay that journey um, if it's not required but it's the severity of the fog and how it affects your vision imagine like when you're driving uh, when you're at home and you know at night time and it's all dark isn't it the house is in darkness and you need to get up to go get some water for example a glass of water when you get up and go you're going to be moving around the house much much slower than you normally do and ultimately that's a, just an inbuilt instinctive safety mechanism I suppose because your vision you can't see can you you don't want to put all the lights on to wake everybody up so you tend to move around much much slower than you normally do no different here with fog the only, the, only, the only difference is that because you're sat in a car which is warm and you, you know, you're still comfortable, then <clears throat> the temptation is that you won't adapt your driving. And that's what a lot of tra a trap of a lot of people fall into, uh, is that they do not adapt their driving to reflect the conditions. The ultimate principle of driving, <clears throat> adapting your driving with regards to vision is, as the vision goes down, so must your speed because ultimately you must be able to stop in a distance that is seen to be clear. <clears throat> I'm just going to start driving around just so that you can start seeing, just in case you haven't driven at all around in any fog. That um, nasty M5 business on the motorway where all those fatalities, that was a classic example, that was, of people that were not adapting their speed to reflect the lack of vision that they had in front of them. Remember, 70 miles an hour, you're traveling at 103 feet a second, 70 miles an hour. So <clears throat> it's going to it's going to take you 100 meters to come to, if you needed to come to a stop, it's going to take you 100 meters to do that um, at 70 miles an hour. And sometimes the fog, on the face of it, you're thinking to yourself, oh, this isn't too bad. But this rolling fog, this thick fog that comes in and goes very, very quickly, it's very, very deceiving, you know. Um, if you're driving on a, say on a motorway and you start seeing signs for fog, and yet you can't see any, then check your mirrors, come off the gas, and adapt to your speed because you might find yourself entering a thick, rolling fog, bank of fog, which is seriously going to affect your vision. And this is the problem that they had on that M5 crash. <clears throat> People were driving into thick fog where they couldn't see that actually there were a massive pile-up of cars and vehicles and so they were literally piling into stationary vehicles it's awful awful business so this is a very very big um, deal this is um, now because it's the, the, the danger it's not the danger the, the problem with this is is that in the thicker fog, when somebody's got their rear fog light on, your eyes will naturally be 
sort of attracted to the, because you can't see anything, can you? The fog, the fog is preventing you from seeing anything. So if you're not careful, you're driving to the rear fog light of the driver in front, which is amazingly hazardous, because <laughs> you're in effect putting your life in the hands of the driver in front. That driver can't see anything, you know? If that driver is driving too fast for the conditions, then guess what, so are you. So try to avoid, as tempting as it is, because you know the rear fog light of the vehicle in front gives you a bit of a guide as to where the road is. But try to avoid driving on that driver's lights on that on that vehicle in front of you. <clears throat> you need to be giving yourself an extra cushion of distance from the vehicle in front of you in fog, because ultimately you can't see beyond that vehicle, can you? And so therefore you don't have the you know you, you are. You are literally just dealing with the vision that you've got in front of you. You've got to be able to stop in a distance that is seen to be clear. See how this, see how the severity of this fog, I don't know if this comes out in video, it comes and it goes. Sometimes you would just describe it as a slight mist, and other times, yeah, it's much thicker fog. And that's the way it goes with this. <clears throat> so the fog lights should be on when the visibility is reduced to less than 100 metres in front of you. That's what the highway code says which at this very moment in time, my vision isn't reduced to less than 100 metres. <clears throat> some cars have got front and rear fog lights and some cars don't. The front fog lights tend to be lower down so that when you do need them, they are not uh, sort of just showing up all the fog. Uh, if you were to drive in fog and put your full beam on, the one that puts the blue light on the dash, then that really doesn't help your, uh, odd, weirdly enough, that doesn't help your vision at all. It just shows up all of this dense fog that's in front of you. It doesn't help your vision at all. So that's why they put the front fog lights down, lower down, nearer to the road, to try and combat that problem. <clears throat> particularly at speed, driving at speed is absolutely essential that you give yourself more opportunity to be able to stop in the distance that you can see is clear. Okay, I I hope this helps you know like I say you could you could go through all your driving lessons and never drive in this stuff um, so I hope it just kind of just goes over some of the principles that are required when we're driving around in fog any questions at all ping them up please and I'll uh, I will get around to answering them <clears throat>